Hey everyone, we're here at the Michelin rated Oriole to meet with head sommelier Morgan Harris. Oriole New York has held a Michelin star since 2004 and is Charlie Palmer's flagship restaurant for a signature style of progressive American cooking. With over 15,000 bottles of wine, it's no wonder Oriole has become a beacon of fine dining in the Times Square area. Morgan. Hi, how are you? Hey, great. Pleasure Thanks. to have you here. Welcome to Oriole. Thanks so much. It's great yeah. to be here. Yeah. All right, so what are we going to taste today? We are going to try some Gernerveld Liner, which is the great sort of calling card variety of Austria, uh, and just one of my favorite things to put with food. So why don't we go check it out in the cellar then? Can't wait. Okay, let's super. Let's go. All right, well, you know, welcome to the Oriole Cellar. Uh, we are lucky enough here in Times Square to have capacity for almost 15,000 bottles in the cellar. Uh, obviously, we're not entirely full at the moment, but we do have uh, about 8,000 or 9,000 bottles in the cellar right now, including these two Grunerveld Liners that we're going to taste today. Uh, we, I got two pretty different styles. Pekler Kreutzer, a little cluster sats Grunerveld Liner from, uh, from the Vacha. You're just west of, of Vienna up there, okay. 15. Uh, and then one of the real sort of grandmaster producers, this guy named Franz Hertz. Burger uh, is 2012. Cannot wait. Okay, super. Let's so go. cool. Can you give me Oriole in one sentence? Chef Palmer, who opened this restaurant in 1988 when I was three years old, <laughs> um, oh my gosh, invented uh, what he would call progressive American cooking. So that means taking classic French techniques and applying them to sort of relentless invention and the sort of American, very American outlook on like hey, like we can make anything we want to make, so let's invent some new things, but but draw from our culinary heritage. Let's try some Gruner. Yeah, let's do it. So, both of the Gruners we're going to taste today are, are both from Austria. Is Austria mostly known for Gruner only? No, they also make quite a bit of uh, Riesling, would be the other major white variety, okay. and they do make some wonderful red wines as well. Right. Uh, and there's some sort of more obscure indigenous varieties in addition to that, great. Um, which are great. But Gruner is a pretty large percentage of, of the plantings that they have there. So this first this guy here is from a producer called Pekler Kreutzer, the husband and wife team uh, in the Bachhaus from a single vineyard they make called Kloster Sats. Uh, this one's a little bit more sort of on the, the aperitif side, something that I'd serve with appetizers and you know just sort of to drink on its own. I test taste very macro to micro, so I pick wines up and I sort of say, all right, is this wine mostly savory or mostly fruity? That's your first question. Right, I mean, I, that's kind of that. the thing that I'm thinking about. What do you think? I think it's savory. Yeah, right? So for me, that's a good way to encounter it at a basic level because it's not without fruit, but to me, what's most important about this wine is all the savory aromatics it has, um, which are kind of on that green wavelength. That's, that's that kind of parsnipy, turnipy thing, along with that sort of green, almost like pea, lentil sort of greenness. Lentils. Yeah, yeah, exactly. Absolutely lentil. So um, that's that, that's like Gruner's major attribute. Um, it doesn't have a, any really particular fruit character to it that I find. So first you say fruity, savory, right? And then what next? So then you start to like drill a little bit more down inside of those. I start to think about specific types of fruit as well as what adjectives we might assign to that. All right, can we do a game? Sure. All right, we're gonna do a word association. We're gonna taste the wine and okay. say the first word that pops into our head. Okay. And then go back and forth. Cool. I'm gonna say apple. I say lemon. Grapefruit. Lime. Kaffir lime. <laughs> uh, basil. Grass. Lentils. Stones. Salt. Mm. Uh oh, you stung me. <laughs> uh oh, what happens now? Does he win? <laughs> All right, let me say it. Oh, Winning. <laughs> let's taste the next one. Yeah, sure. Let's go. Okay, great. Let's do it. This next guy is is. Uh, to my mind, one of the sort of real grandmaster producers of um, uh, a Gruner. Uh, his family's been making wine there for, for decades. Why don't we take a taste? We're going in the Morgan tasting. We go macro right, right. to micro, and I got sweet. Right. That sweetness is balanced out by such an intense savoriness that that's what makes them so compelling to me. It's really that 50-50 that division between fruity and savory um, and the intensity of those two sets of flavors that makes them compelling. When we tasted the first one, insanely delightful and crisp and wonderful, right. but this feels juicy. Right, this is and like... velvety. Right, it's intense and, and, and rich. And rich. Right, so you, yeah. you feel fancy. You feel fancier when you're drinking it. We are fancy. <laughs> I think so. Cheers <laughs> to that. I am loving drinking these wines, but I think we should have some food with them. Yeah. Is that possible? 
Well, we have the uh, uh, snow pea salad with hazelnut dressing, some uh, toasted hazelnuts, uh, and then we add a little bit of uh, crispy uh, green apples and uh, finish with a little bit of uh, fresh olive oil. And uh, over this side, we have a uh, pan roasted uh, uh, salmon uh, with uh, uh, asparagus risotto and finish with a uh, uh, kind of salsa with um, salmon roe and uh, lemon confit. Delicious, thank you, Chef. All right, so can you take us through this tasting? Yeah, the first question is volume, right? Like, how intense is this? How light and delicate is it versus how weighty and powerful it is? So you look at the, the salad and, and you know it's it's a lot of really fresh stuff. It's, you know the, the, we've got the snap peas in there, uh, we've got uh, the apple, right? Like you get a little bit more richness from the hazelnut. To simplify it to make it a number, right? It's kind of a little sort of a five-ish in intensity. Great. Whereas like this guy, right? It's risotto. salmon, and then on top of that, there's risotto with it, and then you've got roe on it. So you've got a lot of really deep umami flavor, so that even though it's basically a fish-based dish, you have all this richness intensity, so that kind of bumps it up to like an eight or a nine in terms of how powerful you can get a fish dish to be. So you think about volume first, and you think about sort of the associated flavors that we have uh, inside of these. Fundamentally, we're looking at a pretty fresh, easygoing dish that, that needs a wine that isn't gonna overwhelm it. So in the pickler kreutzer is perfect for that. Wait, we've been talking enough about this, so why don't we take a bite of the salad and you tell me how I did, okay? Okay. The hazelnut explodes in my mouth. Mm -hmm. It is absolutely a perfect pairing, acid-wise. Yep. And a balance of the creaminess, and then you got all these green flavors that are just so simpatico with each other. So simpatico. Yeah. It's perfect. For sure. It's just green. With the salmon, right, we got a lot of these, like, same similar flavors that are in the salad, but everything's amped up a notch. I mean, we've got roe, we've got, you know, butter in the risotto. Oh, we have all this like greater creamy texture and that like fatty richness that the salmon has. So something with a little bit more horsepower under the hood, the Hertz burger is perfect for it because we're, we're sticking with the same flavors, we're just bumping up a notch uh, in terms of overall intensity. It just feels like luxurious, kind of thick, and um, rich. I mean, I know we say that, but right. rich and Well, that's rich. the best part about it because you're eating like what's pretty clean food. So you don't want like a big red wine with with this, but you still want something with texture and power, and so like Gruner provides that in spades. So yeah. having something with that sort of horsepower into the hood, but, but still sticking with most of the savory aromatics is exactly where Gruner steps in. Nailed it. Yeah. Morgan, thank you so much. No, my pleasure. You've been followed. I'm going to give you a wine key. Fantastic. Thank you. To show that you've been followed now. Okay. And thanks. And you must come to Oriole and get the Gruner. Please get the Gruner. Thanks to Oriole New York and Morgan Harris for teaching us about Gruner Veltliner. For more articles and videos, head to wineforfood.com.